to do. Will it pay off? Let's find out with our casters of Art Cryptic and Neff. Thank you, Nomad and friends. And yeah, I, mean, I kind of agree. This is a pretty sick draft by LGD. Honestly, for me, it's the last pick Invoker. This thing is so sick in this game. Yeah, you know, we started the day and I was talking about how, uh, you know, EG, uh, North America, they were kind of copying draft strategies from uh, Chinese region. But uh, just, uh, earlier today, so four in was first picking Invoker. Maybe nothing to say. Watch that one and thought, you know what? I'd like playing Invoker. I'd like to be a little bit like Gunner. Didn't they lose? Well, they did. Okay. Horribly. Yeah. yeah. So that's a. Uh... Yeah, maybe not the case. <laughs> Hard to say, but uh, honestly, yeah, this last pick invoker is very sick. It, it it counters out a lot of the heroes here on the side of Vici Gaming. You get the built-in disarm from the deafening blast. You have the man burns onto XM. A big fight over this first ward. <laughs> like seven heroes attacking you for the last. What do you know of the ward wars? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. I love the transition to putting Ame on the Kunkka. We've seen this before. Uh, Faith Beyond taking the Beastmaster, a very high tempo hero. Yeah, unfortunately, you're playing it into the Troll Warlord. I'm not a big fan of this hero. Uh, we talked about that one. You hit him with the Heaven's Halberd, and uh, the guy's not sure what to do with his, with his hands. It's like an esports photo shoot. Yeah. But uh, now, great against the Boars, uh, great against the uh, Helm of the Dominator. Once you get set, Helm of the Overlord, the Whirling Axe is so good for allowing you to stand your ground. And he has a pretty easy time running down the Boars, too. So. If you get any kills off on those at 60 XP a pop, you can just you completely dominate the lane. So it would be a little bit careful. Last time we saw this, um, we actually saw uh, Phoenix run this against uh, PSG LGD, and they just went for um, the Hoodwink and like focused on killing his boards. They went two points in the axes in order to counter that out just because they figured, okay, well, we'll just spam our spells off of this Phantom Sass and we won't deal with their evasion. Same sort of deal with Troll. I imagine that uh, they'll put multiple points in the axe in the early laning phase. I'm not sure how many, and then they'll start uh, going for the boars and call the wild post laning phase for strength pushing and whatnot. Ooh, we got clipped by that anyways. Yeah. Try to walk forward Radiant to the tower there, the tower XM. Unlucky. I mean, luckily it's level 1 EMP. It doesn't burn a ton of mana, but that is going to be an extra remnant for sure that he just lost. Yeah, and each remnant is like 1 to 2 CS. Oh. Very annoying playing against the Invoker uh, as the Storm Spirit. I imagine once he hits level 4, he's probably just going to move into the jungle because your farm speed slows down so much with those EMPs constantly coming out off into you. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we do have... Uh, you were talking a little bit about the Beastmaster lane here. It's a Weaver 5, which is a little bit uh, uncommon. Like, a lot of times we are seeing the Weaver played in the 4, but it can be played in 5 as well. Um, Eric on the troll should have a pretty free lane at least early on against the Beastmaster. Well, uh, level one would be a little bit difficult for him until he's got the evasion from, or like a uh, melee form to be able to switch to uh, the mischance axes. Is there a proper word for that one? Just whirling axes. They're both whirling axes, though. Yeah. If they don't get it, that's their fault then. Yeah, uh, true. You should be able to tell what I'm saying just by feeling. All right. Top lane, uh, disruptor. Pretty solid counter pick to the uh, Tide Hunter, of course. It uh, doesn't matter if he's got his Kraken Shell in order to dispel. If you're sitting underneath that uh, Static Storm plus Kinetic Field, you're not getting that Ravage off. So it's been seen as one of the more common counters as well. But unfortunately, last time we saw uh, Ame here on the Kanka, he didn't have the best performance. But nothing to say, he's been kind of picking up the slack every time that uh, he isn't doing so hot. Kunkka has just looked super solid today in general. I mean, this hero seems to be owning uh, out, of the mid out of the mid lane both times, but ends up being pretty much this hard carry in the late game. I mean, last time we, we saw, we all remember the crits off the, the Roshan to just completely turn the fight. So it was very sick, very well done, but excited to see what they're going to do with the safe link Kunkka, what his build's going to be. My guess is going to be probably the armlet, probably Silver Edge this game. It seems very strong. Yeah, Silver Edge against the troll uh, and the Kunkka, just standard stuff. Uh, BKB also very necessary here. You want to be able to get away from the troll warlord when he pops his ultimate. Uh, not having permanent you and you know, fight into the Tide Hunter. Yeah, really nice creep aggro there, actually, from the Kunkka. And just keep the uh, melee in range for him so that he could actually get the last hits. Um, overall, Storm's doing pretty well in the mid lane. 19 and 1 Stupendous. to uh, 15 and 2. Yeah, he's going to already be done, I imagine, though. Yeah, at this point, you, you go to the 202 build, and uh, nothing to say, we'll be able to just tornado EMP you constantly, so. It is a, it gets a lot more difficult from yep. here. No. Top lane, Kunkka actually falling really low. It was maybe a little bit too far forward. Grimstoke needs another auto attack to find the kill, but goes in range there of the tower. Go. So looks like he's going to be fine. Salved up. Does he get the stroke? Off the mark. Unlucky. Good attempt though. Yeah, nice try. But 
No. It shows that uh, nothing to say better Kanka player as you know, he did have uh, the waterlogged boots and you know, the swag that uh, Kanka yeah. said. A little bit less impressive here on Omni. I like, I still like his set. It's a good one still. But yeah, you're right. Not not as swagged out. Irving here stuck inside the kinetic field. This could be the first blood. Does he get the uh, nice body blocks there from the Grinstroke, cutting off that path and very close? Uh, I thought for certain he was dead there, but unfortunately Kunk not able to get that uh, cleave off. But would have had to walk right into that stun. Next, um, I mean, he's tied for CS right now with the Invoker. He's behind on um, XP. You got a couple more denies, but he's not getting anything. Oh, rotation from the Rubik to the mid lane. There's your first blood onto that Invoker. Top lane, Inkswell will stun up the Kunkka as well. Slowing him with the Stroke of Fate. Can they actually finish off the kill? This time, they will. Goes the way of the Grim Stroke. <laughs> nice fine. Unfortunately, you don't get yourself first blood. You lose the Strong Spirit first. But from this game, gonna be slowed down a little bit. I imagine he's gonna head straight into the jungle after he, uh, uh, maybe he'll clear out the first creep wave if uh, nothing to say about it in, but you don't want to hang around here. You want to get your level six and start looking around the map and trying to find kills. The disruptor and the Rubik are, you know, ideal targets for you. Very easy to get on top of them. Uh, they're somewhat squishy and, you know, you have the other heroes of your team that can help set up these kills. Getting an ink spell onto you would, you know, uh, being able to get him on, on top of them with the stun, just blow them up very quickly. I'm really going to have time to react. Mm -hmm. Aggressive bottom. Yeah. They really want that boar. He's going to get it. All right, like you're saying, the XP that uh, they provide does definitely add up, so you can't really afford to feed too many of those things. Five on Erica already, and you can't stand your ground and fight against uh, the Troll Warlord with them, as you just get 60% uh, like missed chance when you try to trade auto-attack them, so... One of the reasons why Troll, uh, Troll Warlord is not a commonly picked carry right now, but very good in this Beastmaster matchup. We're going to see how, how Faith Beyond does as this game goes on, because at the moment, definitely struggling. Bottom of the net worth in terms of the core matchups, but uh, also joining him is that Storm Spirit. He is he's pretty much out of the mid lane entirely, like we were talking about. You get to the level 4, level 5 on the Invoker, and then suddenly, you know, the single EMP... You know, Tornado EMP burns like half your mana pool and there's just like nothing you can do. Yeah, and you know, he, he knew what he was doing here. He knew that the lane would kind of go like this. I don't think he was expecting to die, but uh, going the 202 build is just like maximum farming. You don't have much, like any kill potential uh, because you don't have uh, the pull. But, uh, I don't think you were going to find a kill against nothing to say anyway. So he actually put a point in at level five, which is interesting. Uh, like I was talking about, I imagine he's just going to TP to a lane, try to set something up with one of his teammates. Speaking of TP, Jin Q? He's not going to TP out? He's going to be fine. Okay, makes it underneath the tower. I thought for sure he would just TP out right away, but uh, he ran the numbers. He's good. Yep, Storm Spirit. Yep, he's going to go ahead. Go to the top lane. Try to find a kill off onto uh, Kunkka here. I mean, this would be a fantastic kill. He's not quite level 6 on the Kunkka, so no boat. And XM going to recover a little bit of his game there with that rotation. So very, uh, very nicely done. It's been 2,500 net worth, but uh, already 700 ahead of him in the mid lane. <laughs> uh, he's putting back everything on nothing to say. Uh, this is all you can really do on the Storm Spirit, though. You go to the mid lane, you, you try to get like a single wave of CS. You're just going to hit by the Tornado EMP Cold Snap, have all your mana burned out, and then you're not farming anymore. So at this point, he just has to kind of dodge the Storm Spirit. Grimstroke can sit mid, uh, spam out waves, and... Oh, oh no. XM, dude, he has like no mana. He's got a zip for like a... Like a, just a few moments here, and we'll pop the stick. Able to get a little bit of space. Gonna lose his courier in the process, though. With the treads on it. No, I think the treads got no, delivered. No, they were. Yeah, oh, they okay. Yeah, yeah. It said that it went down with the treads on it, though. No, no, no. The, tre the tread icon that came up was like oh, the purchasing okay. of it because okay. it combined in his inventory. My bad. Uh, it died at like the same time that that happened. Yeah. I mean, at least he managed to get the treads. XM, I'm gonna get his bottle refilled there from Jama, so. Wait, or not. He just he just TP'd up here to, to, to salve him so he could actually make his way back to base because he yeah. sees nothing to say as well as why. And Q are still here. They're going to find the Weaver holding him inside that kinetic field. A great answer for that hero. And XM blimps back into the trees. Going to try and make his rotation in. Great play from the grip stroke. Hits that Ixwell, but Telekinesis is away. He's going to have the space and now XM without any mana. Irving going to be forced to pop the Ravager. They managed to take down one XM. Still doing some work here with the little bit of mana that he has. Word up on this high ground, will be able to see uh, the rest of these heroes unable to chase, so they will just TP home. They managed to turn that one, they kill off on the Disruptor, unfortunately they couldn't punish uh, the Invoker. The one saving grace to all this is they spent a lot of time chasing that storm under his tower, and while he's doing that, Erica is farming up, so ideally, 
he carries this game. Like, uh, Storm Spirit's game is, like, almost ruined off of uh, that, but the Invoker did waste a little bit of time himself. He's no longer sitting at the top of the net worth. Troll Warlord is the one with that privilege. And it looks like he's going for a Battle Fury. He's got the Void Stone in his inventory. I'm just not sure he's going to be able to do enough by himself. He's playing against two Strength Heroes, and, you know, uh, these people can just naturally build Heaven's Help and... Oh, no. Big... That was a nice mine. Yeah. Really well done by the Grimstroke. Now, the second time, he's uh, kind of just jumped at someone out from the tree line. But Eric and I rotating the top lane, meaning that he does want to push this tower just before that 10 minute mark. And uh, level 8 on the troll. I mean, top net worth here, feeling pretty dang strong. Hunka not too far behind, but he did have a death in the lane, so slowed him down a little bit. Yeah. Will be. I mean, he can keep up with troll for farm. Tybringer is amazing farm ability, especially if people make him stacks. And oh, there is a stack over at the ancient camp right now on the. Uh, oh, sorry. Bottom lane, Roar, onto the Weaver. All right, they hate this Weaver. He just got literally clapped. Yeah. And uh, I think they did see Troll Warlord TP up to the top lane, so they knew it was pretty safe, and they know that uh, if he's not running out of the Whirling Axes, he's going to be able to take this uh, Tier 1 tower pretty quickly with his Humble Dominator. He didn't go any points into Whirling Axes this game, despite the fact that he was playing into a build on Troll that made it kind of difficult for him to use summoned units, but if he just avoids the Troll, then he's going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, he just wants to kind of maintain bottom and just push here, right? Like, his his idea is to just try and farm up, create space, and get to this home of the Overlord. Yeah, exactly. Right, we hit the 10-minute mark. Neither support, none of the supports are level 6 quite yet. They've uh, been very active around the map, so yeah. unable to actually uh, sit in one of these lanes and get some XP. Yeah. We see Ame finally cleaning up these stacks in the jungle, and yeah, skyrockets to top of the net worth. 5,400 here just after the 10 minute mark. That feels very good. And looks like they're hesitant to make any plays for if that even counts. Yeah. So they uh, bring it back despite Storm Grid having a pretty slow start. And I think it was partially due to the fact they wasted so much time on so many heroes that are run at Storm. Um, so, PSG. They do get punished for that by uh, VC. I mean, overall, uh, Tidehunter having a fantastic game so far. Um, I, I don't think they really should have had any business finding that kill onto uh, Kunkka in the top lane, but they did nonetheless, Dyer's and he is, uh, is under attack. armed up pretty dang Radiant's well, but Kunkka with the arm like complete. Did you see he queued up? He's got Boots of Travels next. On Kunkka? Yeah. I'm fine with that, actually. I, I like this a lot. Yeah, he's just going to go around the map as quickly as possible and uh, farm up. Well, the other idea is you can bot to uh, a lane and then, yeah. Beastmaster. Oh, yeah, yeah, that too. And Tornado EMP, cold snap, easy kill onto the Grimstroke, and those are your first Spirit Vessel charges of the game, and now things get very scary. Everything's going to step in the mid lane. I mean, when you see so many uh, enemy heroes in the mid, that's essentially what you do on Tide Hunter. Rather than getting a blink dagger, you just get a, a tanky item, wait for the enemies to come to you, and you either hold the tower and waste their time, or you turn it on them if they uh, quit on you with a rabbit. They're looking for Irving. I mean, he can pop that Ravage, but he's stuck inside the Static Storm. And they finish him off in time. Faith Beyond comes in, has the roar, will drop it. Tornado, he actually misses for the moment, but EMP burns out all of his mana and he will go down. So your big, bad Tidehunter, the one who needed to protect his mid lane tower, ends up falling. Uh, he did have a soul ring, but uh, you know, I think his teammates just thought he was too far gone. He wouldn't have been able to survive that initial uh, static storm. So I think he could have gotten off the Ravage, but uh, you know, he didn't really believe in him. It was fallen. just so difficult. Like he ravages maybe at like three HP, right? Like there's no one HP. The soul ring would bring you down to like yeah. one. So no. he could have gotten the mana, but uh, would have lost all of his HP. Double Maybe it would have been too dicey. Uh, a little bit too dicey. Yep. Jama gonna find the enemy heroes here. Dust will catch him, but sets up for XM to come in with an ink swell as well. Ends up getting glimpsed, but also x back, so they're just toying with his movement speed for a little bit here, trying to take down the Weaver. He's still got the time last up. End up getting it off, though. Now looking for more. XM, he gets Faith Beyond here. This would be a really sick kill, but he's starting to run low on mana, popping Mango after Mango. On the backside of the fight, they find the Tidehunter, as well as the Grimstruck, burning all of his mana once again. A tornado to follow, nothing to say, doing work on this Invoker, but there's going to be the Soul Ring, the Ravage, but... It's all for naught as uh, Ame oh, claims another, a double kill here on the Kunkka. More, is he? There's no way he finds this Dude, spirit. XM's out of mana. He's got him on the Torrent. He gets the X. He's got him with the X, but Torrent on cooldown. Can he I mean, can. He can. Oh. Snap Spear Vessel. He's got no mana. He's, He's got nothing to take. He needs so much help here to make it back, but he ends up burning anyway. They get the kill of the TP's coming in. Razor responds. There's going to be the two-man Soulbind. 
big ink spell popping onto all three, but can they finish him off? Ame able to arm and toggle some of this damage off, starting to stay on top of this Weaver. He's just going to TP home. Weaver time lapses back. Jin Q find huge. Devin Glass holds him inside of the Static Storm. You can't be serious. LGD, are they going to make it out on everything? They can't keep getting away with this. Yo, Jama's actually dead here. The Invoker doing so much damage. Does he finish him off? Able to get away with the Sakuchi. Oh my goodness. Oh my. All right, he gets out of there, but he had no business losing that Storm Spirit, and they didn't catch anybody on the way out. Dude. That deafening blast was huge. Uh, that, that is beautiful coordination right there. Dropping that deafening blast at the same time as the static storm. And Tide Hunter just loses all of his mana here in the mid lane. All of a sudden, uh, he's, his farming speed is just ruined. Invoker uh, is just using the enemy team as mana batteries at this point. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, ah, I'm running a little bit low. Who do I got to go tornado EMP? Yeah. Yeah, they're playing very well. I, I honestly, like, just really good. Like you said, good team coordination on the side of LGD so far. Jin Q with the Sakuchi sets up a roar right for Faith Beyond. Do they have the damage to finish them off in time? They do, just barely. It's going to be the Axes. Well played. And this Storm Spirit, man, look at this. He has been, he has just been thoroughly put through the ringer at this point. Yeah, his game is so hard. I mean, look at this. One, uh, three, and two. And on top of those deaths, he's spending a lot of time not farming. He's getting chased down by the Invoker. The EMP is being thrown out of him. He is bottom of the net worth among all the cores. You don't want to see that out of your position, too. I mean, are we going to see a carry Weaver coming in to compensate like we saw Zin Q do the other day? It's, it's hard to say. Erica's got a lot to, to do this game to carry it at this point. Like, this troll has to be enormous. Yeah. I mean, I want to go back to the point our uh, panel was making. Uh, like, PSG, LGD, they keep on picking these heroes that uh, don't really fit into the meta. I think everybody else gets a little bit lazy, but... They seem to like perfectly counterpick everything every single game. Uh, they're, they're just a step ahead of everybody else when it comes to drafting. And uh, you do owe a lot of that to Zhao Wei. Yeah, their hero pool is just so good, right? And they yeah, use every game to continuously expand it. And so there's. Uh, it just seems like it constantly keeps everything in mind and, you know, it isn't uh, a complete slave to the meta. Like, he'll like follow very loosely what is super popular and uh, strong at the moment, but he seems to also know what is going to be the best pick for every specific game. And this is one of the best invoker games you could have had, despite the fact that the hero uh, relatively unpicked here in uh, the Chinese region. I think this is the first invoker game we've seen in, in Div 1. Div 1, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, me, I'm a huge fan of the invoker. I love playing this hero, and, and it's one of those things like, when if it's a good invoker game, it feels so good. Yeah. It's not even just that he's having a good game himself, it's that he's completely ruined XM's game. Yeah. I mean, not as Tidehunters as well, right? Like, Tidehunter was off to a really good start, top lane. Top, speaking of which, gonna be X into the boat. Oh no, the timing is perfect. XM goes down once again. The fourth death now on the Storm Spirit. Yeah, he he threw him off there. He throws out uh, the, the Torrent and the Raptor at the same time. He has to choose one that he wants to dodge, and then he brings him back in the middle of him finishing his zip there. If you're invulnerable, when uh, he pulls back the X, you end up getting away from it, but not there. Yeah, he predicted that Storm Spirit uh, when he was going to zip and then pulled him back. It was so sick, man. I guess you only have so much mana to work with. Irving here. Well, if you can zip for the entire four seconds, then you're safe, but he brought him back uh, pretty well there. I mean, what, do you, what do you do against nothing to say he's invoker now because he has the Midas he's on his way to the Aghanim Scepter I knew this one was coming eventually Black talked a little bit about it earlier they have fantastic Cataclysm setup in the form of the Roar you have uh, Rubik who can steal some big spells but you also have Disruptor just Static Storm Kinetic Field a great tool for locking these heroes in uh, into a single small area I mean you take it late like Troll Whirler will eventually outcarry everybody on the side of PSG LGD. Unfortunately, he can't do it by himself. Like, they've got the ability to just kite him around with their heroes. So, if Troll Whirler is the only farmed hero in Storm Spirit and is just getting shut down, uh, they're going to kite the troll. And as you see, uh, happen to troll like almost every game that he's picked up. Yeah, they're actually going to smoke up here on the side of PSG LGD, see if they can find something. Tidehunter in the mid lane would be fantastic. He's underneath the hawk. He doesn't necessarily know where they are. There's going to be the telekinesis. He's tumble toys for a moment. Tornado off the mark as a result. This guy's got schmooves. On the other side, though, they find the troll warlord instead. The roar comes out. The EMP is going to burn all his mana. Static Storm is there as well. Can they actually keep him alive? The boat comes through. Ame helps find the kill. And Troll Warlord, your big carry, he goes down. And now the fight falling to pieces here for the side of the game. Rubik. They're getting ran. Oh no, he does. They're just getting ran down one by one here. Didn't even need to use it. 
He stole that one there, snagged that right out of the Tide Hunter's hands, and they're Dyer's confident to take Roche top. with his Ravage on the Rubik. Yeah, they're gonna actually use this to find Storm, 100%. He's gonna just telekinesis Storm into a Ravage. Yeah. That's what it's being saved for. Anyone that wants to come in and try and contest this Roche on needs to be very careful. Yeah. It's gonna fall fast. I'm not sure if they know that he stole the Ravage. I mean, Tide Hunter probably told them, but... If the Storm Spirit goes into this, he's definitely dead. They're gonna think, okay, they use Static Storm, they use Roar. It's gonna be pretty safe for me to jump in here. All they have is Lift, but... Ooh, nothing to say his Courier got sniped there, so... Uh, point Booster, not gonna be available. Eh, it's not that big. He doesn't have the Axe quite yet anyway, so... So, a little bit of gold uh, to everyone on their team. Only a 3 key net worth advantage, despite these last couple of team fights feeling very one-sided. Troll Warlord, he's a fairly fast farmer, but... Uh, Okay, ahead of him at the moment. I mean, Faith Beyond is going to continue to be such an issue for the side of EG Gaming on this uh, Beastmaster. Storm Spirit goes in. There's going to be a Telekinesis into the Ravage. We said it. He's got the Storm's number, baby. Zin Q helps secure another. And just like that, roars back up. So they continue to push. They used a spell that wasn't even theirs. And I think Rubik would be more than happy to steal something else. Stuck to hang on to the Ravage for the next like two and a half oh, minutes. And they're looking for more. Dyer's Roar out onto on the attack. Grimstroke. Traps him in play. Static Storm as well. Maybe they're just taking maybe hero maybe after maybe hero. Maybe Anything that they find is, is just awful. dead. Yeah. They try to punish that dive by popping tap flap, even though not everybody's hitting it, uh, just because they want to spread out the DPS on everyone hit all the supports, but... Uh, now all of a sudden you don't have Fortify. They still got Aegis available on Kanka. Uh, you're hoping they don't try to go high ground after you waste that fortification there. Zin Q just setting up uh, some, you a, know, a trap. Radiant I mean, if anyone walks up there, they're gonna take a lot of damage. Or if they walk close, they can just pull yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's the poor man's techies right there. Yeah. Battle Fury done on that uh, troll roller, so you know he can farm pretty quick and he's staying towards the top Radiant's of the net worth. But they're looking uh, to close this out fast on the PSG. Yeah. They're either going for the assault cross instead of the heaven's halberd on Kunkka. That's a sign that they're wanting to push high ground rather than fighting into VC. I don't think he needs that. Like, you don't want your character Kunkka to go to the Albert this game. He needs to be the damage dealer. Like, the, you, he you, needs to be your heavy damage dealer. You don't, but it's also an incredibly good item Dude, against Troll. And if he's the only one doing damage, then it is worth getting on your carry. Dyer's yeah. But, you know, he's just. Attack. Troll is very clearly not an issue. Yeah, why? Gonna get Vision of XM here once again. Nice zip on forward, but instead. Dyer's has to be a little bit careful. Telekinesis Spirit Vessel. They're able to chain stun him down the glimpse as well. Can he make it? Is it Rubik? Stealing top. ball lightning, is it enough? XM will survive. Very close. Oh, well they've got the Weaver as well, Ame. X into the boat, the torrent ball. There's your Static Storm finally coming off cooldown here. Would have loved to use that on the Storm Spirit, but they don't find him. Um, Grimstroke? Died to Faith Beyond and just catches him with a roar. Oh, he didn't even roar him. What did he, how did he? You just ran him down with uh Yeah, he's too far forward and a big golem. Yeah, so and that thing does two hundred damage a hit. It like slaps you too. It's no joke. Radiance middle tower. Double bore and uh granite golem is a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you know, Troll World is supposed to be super good against this beast bass to be able to clear out uh these ancient creeps pretty quickly, but uh, this game he just can't fight into it, his team doesn't have the strength and the six K now with this advantage, it feels so much worse than that. It does, yeah. I mean your troll is super farmed, but you do have the situation where it's like he can't be the one that just like runs in. Vanguard on the Beastmaster. Missile Blade to give It's coming. Is he really? I mean, why not? No, he's going Crimson Guard. Oh, okay. He wants to be able to keep his uh, units alive. Troll Warlord uh, goes oh. down. Made it. Rubik. However, still might be in trouble. Oh, never mind. He's got ball lightning. He's yeah. still fine. So uh, when the troll world attacks, he'll uh, cleave on all the units, but you know, they have all this armor, they're gonna have the damage block, and you know, he's got a lot of attack speed, but not necessarily a lot of damage, so his units will stay alive, they'll be able to survive the tower flak. I guess that's the reasoning for it. That blade would be insane, man. I kind of forgot that Crimson Guard was an item, if I'm being completely honest. That's fair. It's one of those things, you don't see it very often, it kind of fell out of the meta a lot. The only heroes who really ever built it were like, Underlord and... Well, it makes sense with Beastmaster. It's yeah. like a completely situational on who you're playing against, but a lot of the time you solve your issues by just killing the hero faster rather yeah. than surviving. But if you want to push high ground here, you already have the Vlads. Faith Beyond back to his antics here in the bottom lanes. He's just pushing a tier two, pretty much uncontested, and his team close enough. So if they, uh, Beachy Gaming, want to take a fight, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble. Oh, am I going to come down here, slot the tower, get the last yeah, he's got carry contribution? Yeah, he's got his all Karas completed. Um, 
I am not sure what they do to prevent that. Okay, they've got four or five available again, actually. Like They're just gonna... The time. They just want to burn the Aegis here, right? Like, 30 seconds left, do as much damage to the Tier 3 Tower as they can. Black, like you said, gonna slow this push down a little bit. But is it even enough? The AC? No, not even close. Still so strong, and Beastmaster close enough on the backside. Just hits the Tier 3 Tower. They will disengage. 10 seconds left on the Aegis. Smoked up here on VG Gaming. Would love to find something. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen, though. Uh, no, but they will find Zen Q, but again, he doesn't connect with the Vortex, looking for nothing to say as well. The age is going to expire. They don't have detection. They just disengage completely, and now XM's got to be careful. He's running right back into the enemy team. There's going to be the Cold Snap. The Spirit Vessel Chain Stuns are there. XM falling low, He's finally makes out. BB before they're defending the base as well. Yeah, this is rough. Managed to catch the Grimstroke outside the base. He will fall. BKB is just used on Storm Spirit. You committed your fortification. There's nothing stopping PSG LGD from just going up the high ground here. Oh. That's exactly what they're going to do. X into boat. Waiting for the uh, detection to come back in. He gets the time lapse off. Okay. Burns that cooldown. Boat on cooldown though as well. Yeah, but the rest of the team just playing objective gaming. They, they know that they can't defend here. If they pop the Ravage, then they're just going to end up wasting it. And You got a Beastmaster. Yeah, that's the melee rack gone just like that. It's uh, too sweet. XM definitely off his game here. I mean, this is it, this is just the the nature of an imperfect invoker game. Like it really is. He's got the Aghanim scepter completed as well. So even Cataclysm, an option for this team. Anyone gets roared, they're just super dead. Yeah. Anytime they go just a little bit too far forward, uh, the the amazing team coordination uh, just ends up punishing them. They've died in ages. I actually caught the smoke there just off the edge, so they know that they're here. Nice positioning from VG Gaming. I mean, this could be a uh, potential big fight for them. They do have the Blink, the Ravage available. They've just got to find someone to start it on, and we'll see Faith Beyond. That's going to be the one that they choose. XM gets the BKB off, and Erica comes in as well. Can they actually finish off Beastmaster, though? Faith Beyond, so tanky, thanks to the Crimson Guard. They get the Roar right on top of the Troll Warlord. Still has that Battle Trance available if he can drop it. Stolen Soulbind on the backside. There he is. He's going to turn his attention on over to Ame, but there's the Deafening Blast instead. And Troll gets trolled. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. He's going to die. Backside of the fight, XM looking to go for Faith Beyond. Does get the kill. Irving with a Blink, Blink, Ravage. Does he steal it? He does. Rubik. He wants to turn around instead. Cataclysm doesn't really connect, but they get the kill on a Tidehunter anyway. And they just GG out like that. It is over, baby. And there's the Ravage at the end. They know there's no way to fight into them here. Zin Q jumping the backline, stopping Tidehunter from getting an initiation into that fight alongside the...